In this week's episode, we are going to be talking about forgiveness and not so much focusing on forgiveness of others, but our ability to forgive ourselves. So without further ado, let's get into it. Hello, everyone. You're listening to All Cards on the Table podcast with Claire and Sylvia, a show that talks about how men and women aren't so different from each other. We just don't speak the same language. We will dissect every topic and put an end to miscommunication. So get ready to get uncomfortable. Hi, and welcome back. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Claire Atio. Hi, everyone. This is Silvia Yajaira. And as I said in the introduction, we're going to be talking about forgiveness. We're going to be talking about that self-forgiveness. And this came onto the spectrum because there are a lot of middle-aged people out there that have very dysfunctional ways of communicating very dysfunctional ways of having a relationship and a lot of that is because they haven't faced and acknowledged things that they've done in their past so that's what we want to unpack when we're young and we do silly things or even important things in the wrong form and then we're not able to forgive ourselves. Then we're not able to, we've realized what we've done, but we're not able to face what we've done. And if we're not able to face what we've done, we then don't take responsibility or accountability for what we've done, which then stops us from being able to apply that forgiveness to ourselves and move forward. And we want to discuss this because it's important. The, the, we all know there's been a massive increase on both both the masculine and the feminine of people that are displaying narcissistic tendencies, people that are dysfunctional with their communication, people that can't hold down a relationship or keep going into toxic relationships. And so we want to unpack the whys of that because there is always a why, there is always a root cause. And that's what we want this episode to be about, looking at that root cause and giving you some tips on how you can actually start to address that, start to heal that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's uh, important to say that it's out of fear, of course, and that the biggest player here is shame. Shame is what keeps us from moving forward. And it's the ability to accept that we've done something awful or something we're not so proud of and having been told, or not even if nobody knows, but mostly the the idea that we believe that we need to suffer for what we have done, Mm -hmm. must continue to do that in order to pay for what we have done. But just like any child when they do something wrong and they say, I'm sorry, and you forgive them, it's forgiven and forgotten. And you move mm-hmm. forward and the actions and yourselves themselves moving forward and be improving is what's important. But for some reason, we have grown to believe that we must carry this burden with us for the rest of our lives. And that shame is what keeps us from growing. It's the shame that keeps us from evolving to becoming a better person. And we need to discuss that because, I mean, you've carried that weight with you so long already and it's time for put put it down and forgive yourself and say, you know what, I did that and I'm sorry, but I'm going to improve. And facing yourself back then and saying, I can see the damage we've done and I need to move forward now. It's time for us to heal. Yeah, yeah. And we were pre-recording this, we were talking, we were discussing there was a... a was it a, a Facebook or a TikTok or where a father had actually messed with his wife's birth control because he was so desperate to have a family. And then obviously things spiraled out of hand because she wasn't she wasn't able or in a, a mental space to be a mother. And so she ended up leaving. And the child as an adult really laid into the mother when she she tracked her down and she she really laid in because she'd only heard the father's 
side of this story and then the mother actually said that well actually you exist because there was a manipulation of the birth control Mm -hmm. and that was actually confirmed by the father now the father in all that time had not been able to have another relationship had not taken another relationship had not been in another stable relationship and it's it's that guilt it's Mm -hmm. that shame that he's up until the point when his daughter challenged him he'd been carrying that Mm -hmm. he'd been living with that now this is a very extreme case Mm -hmm. but we've all done things because we've desperately wanted something in our youth and we've not been willing to wait for it so we've and and that's that's part of being youthful that's part of the human journey with there is something whether it's that bad or whether it's just eating eating your brother's sweets or or whatever it is we've all done something because we haven't wanted to wait Mm -hmm. that we're not proud of that wasn't our best selves it's that's not the issue here the issue is the inability to look at acknowledge take responsibility and accountability Mm -hmm. and then give the forgiveness and the forgiveness is it's not about condoning the behavior that's where the accountability and responsibility comes in that's saying i did that i'm going to take responsibility for that it was not my best moment i was out of line that was wrong of me and i have suffered these consequences since yeah but again that goes back to shame and I think most of us are more afraid of not being judged by because I think a lot of people would say you know I will confront this but it's our self-judgment and that shame and fear of accepting that we could possibly do something so horrific like for instance that extreme case or even something like I did this to my brother or this to my wife or this or my ex-wife or girlfriend and admit into yourself that yeah you can go that to that route you can be that dark and I think a lot of us don't want to accept that um but- so there's and so for instance when we do that we have to first of all like admit that all of us have a little bit of darkness all of us every single person of us have done something we're not very proud of mm-hmm. Some of us may be more extreme than the others, but there is no scale that you're better me than I am better. Um, we're better off or anything like that. It's just because that's our own personal growth. So if you're carrying this shame from something that you did, you've carried it so long that you probably are vague on the idea of what actually happened. And if you go back, it's probably out of fear and you need to realize what was, what were you so afraid of and face that. Mm-hmm. because that is still holding on to you today and that's why you can't move forward and that's why it's, there's a there's a you keep giving yourself all these excuses of like now this is going to happen this is going to happen but the root cause is at that moment you very well knew something was wrong you still did it and therefore you feel like on subconsciously you have to punish yourself for the rest of your life even though that might be in the front forward part of it and And a lot of, especially with men, they think that's what needs to be done. And with society telling them that you're no good, you did this and this and that, you're an awful person, you automatically assume that all women are going to look at you that way. So you should shut down and focus on work and become, you you go in, you don't say anything. Mm -hmm. And for men, I think it's harder because they don't have that community. By nature, they don't. They, they don't seek friendships. They don't go out and talk. Even if they go out to the pub and hang out or golf or whatever, they don't sit there and talk about their feelings. Oh, hey, guess what? Last week I got, I really want her, so I'm going to knock her up. <laughs> you know? They don't say the things like that. But women would be like, they would probably be like, I really want him. What can I do? We're going to do this. I mean, I've heard some crazy stories from women talking about like, oh, you can always do like a little witchcraft or you can do a little this and that and it's so open that I'm like no am you crazy are you that desperate Mm -hmm. right but it's easier men don't talk about that but they act on it and then don't say anything afterwards 
woman, the beauty about women is when we talk about it, we usually have someone else talking us out of it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that, a, that, that's, that's a that's helpful. And that's helpful. Or they can be like, sure, we'll help you. Tell us what to do, right? Depending on the situation. But men don't. And then they carry that for a long time until one day, for some reason, they opened up. Maybe in this case, it was a daughter who opened him up and had to come face to face with what he did back then. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, finally reveal like, yeah, you know, I was so in love with this person that it drove me to do the worst it, it brought the worst out of me. And there is a saying that when you love someone so much, you're blinded. Your blinding love makes you sometimes do so many bad things. Well, I think that goes back to codependency, doesn't it? And I was going to say, you know, he did that, that he did that. But what was the root cause of him doing that? What were his beliefs, values? And as you said, fears for doing that mm -hmm. what was he trying to hold on to what was he trying so desperately to create to control his environment and, and and this is this is a big thing in society because we've all been brought up believing that codependency is the way to go we we've we've said this many many times in many many podcasts when it comes to social media, when it comes to societal structure, when it comes to our education system, when it comes to how we're being taught to live our lives, it's promoting codependency. And yet codependency is one of the most destructive habits mm. that exist within our society. It's, it's very destructive. It's destructive for, for personal growth. It's destructive for soul growth. It's destructive for emotionally intelligent communications and relationships and yet it's promoted constantly 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 mm -hmm. and, and so we need to look at these root, root causes I think it's been codependency I think it's just been misguided or mislabeled um because people would actually think like, no, we just care for each other. But I think we need to discuss further what codependency actually looks like. Mm -hmm. Because that's why a lot of people don't get it straight or are not clear on the whole codependency. Because if you have, like, for instance, a traditional wife who wants to be married and wants to take care of, and she depends on her husband, mm -hmm. you know, that's there's a difference there of level of being codependent of that person and they can't grow. So there's been so many things that are not clear on what codependency is. So once you see it clearly, you'll be able to see when it's been codependent and, or when you're choosing to be with someone in a lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. And there is a difference because code, codependency, and you're quite right, a lot of people think codependency is, oh, the wife's depending on him. That's a codependency relationship. It could be, but it could also be a very healthy relationship where both of them are stood in their own sovereignty where both of them are stood in their own power where both of them have decided independently to take those roles and to share their lives together mm -hmm. and that's I think for me that's the biggest one people always refer to because it's a more obvious one mm -hmm. but codependency it's also someone that you need someone just to survive and I think that's the key when you need something just to make it through or to survive or to put a value into life. And that's codependency. If you choose to be a stay-at-home mom, but you, for some reason, it's like, like, listen, if this guy leaves tomorrow, I'm totally okay. <laughs> I can manage my own two feet. You're not codependent. You mm -hmm. chose a traditional role and you're happy within that traditional, but you're very well your own person and you stand on your own two feet. That person does not dictate how you feel, how you look or anything like that. Now, if you want to give those pleasures to your husband because he likes that because it comes from you, that's great. But it's when it's demanded from another person in order for you to self, for you to feel valued. I think that's the biggest thing. And codependency for me, it's one of the biggest things that I think it needs to be more talked about because it's not cleared and therefore it's looked we see someone who's like, oh, I want to be next to my husband all the time, or I want to be next to my girlfriend, or um, another part, like partners, or anything like that. And 
is like, oh, you're so codependent. You can't function by yourself. And yeah, if they cannot function by themselves, yes, that is that. And that's not healthy. But if you just want to be with a person because you want to be all the time, that's a different story. And that only you know that. Only you are aware of, can you go to dates without a person and not feel like you're about to fall apart? Because if you're starting to feel fall apart because you're not with that person, that's codependency. And that's what needs to be clear. And I think the other the other aspect of codependency is that you can be, and I think this is where it also comes unstuck, because you can be codependent in one area of life, but completely independent in every mm-hmm. other area of your life. And so if for the majority of people, you go, oh, well, that's a codependency trait going on there. And they go, yeah. no, 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 I'm very independent. Yeah. And 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 but they haven't recognized that in that particular aspect, and it usually pops up in relationships. Mm-hmm. It usually pops up in the in the aspect of relationships. How are you with your friends? Do you allow yourself to be molded to their way of thinking, or do you stand firmly in your own thoughts and hold space for them to for them to stand firmly in their thoughts mm-hmm. and and come to a an amicable working relationship? There are lots lots and lots of, it's a very complex, let's put it that way, it's a very complex aspect of the human experience to start identifying where you are running codependent programs. Because even within relationships, the majority of your relationship, you could be independent, but there's one aspect of relationships. And so... It, it takes a lot of uncovering. It takes a lot of personal development and introspection to, to and, and honest critique of yourself to yeah. start identifying those. And I think that is another key point is where fear co- comes into play because a lot of people are fearful of honestly critiquing themselves. They either yeah. have a habit of thinking... They they have a habit of putting themselves higher than where they actually are on the spectrum or lower. Yeah. Um, Neither actually are helpful to you. What you need to do is to be able to sit honestly in the energy and look at the good, the bad, the ugly, and accept it, take responsibility for it, and apply the forgiveness. We've all got behaviors. I've got behaviors. I've done things. I've got memories of things that I've done. Usually, most of mine are things that I've done, crazy things that I've done, I've done to myself. They haven't involved other people. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't carry the same level of shame. Um, But there were things that I I did that I did need to work through. When I started my personal development program, there were things that I did that I wasn't proud of because they weren't my best moments. And I had to look at that and understand why I done it and for me in many areas it was because at that point in my life I I I didn't have the emotional tools to deal with that situation or I didn't feel that confident enough to deal with that situation in a way that I knew now as a person I was it or then when I was reviewing it I was able to deal with it and I think this is the key as well as we need to take that into account because hindsight's a wonderful thing but hindsight can also be very damaging because we judge our actions of the past by the person we are now very often which Mm -hmm. creates even more shame we weren't that person then we weren't the person that we are now then we didn't have the knowledge that we have now then Mm -hmm. now we can't we shouldn't be using that as an excuse but we should actually be equating that into the situation Mm -hmm. no i think you're right i think it's one of the hardest things to do um is looking back and accepting um what we have done actually because it's obviously not pretty um but it's also very important to do so we can start to live the right life that we're meant to live now Mm -hmm. and moving forward uh and the only way we can do that is to acknowledge that and continue to evolve we're humans and we're meant to make mistakes and we're meant to grow and evolve 
and the past does not dictate who you are now or nor is going to dictate your future but it can if you don't fix it and if you don't acknowledge it and forgive yourself for that because you cannot even if you admit I did this horrible thing and I'm still paying for it silently maybe no one knows about it but you're still paying for it that's really really heavy Mm -hmm. and it's already been done everything has been set in and you just need to go like I am not that person anymore that person no longer lives here Mm -hmm. and I'm sorry for what I've did for what I've done sorry for what has the pain it cost moving forward I will never go back to that and it's taking that lesson, isn't it? It's taking and that moving lesson. forward and say that, that person's no longer me, and allowing yourself to free yourself from that, and moving forward. And I know it is hard, but that's the time where you need to take yourself alone and to sit with it, and go through all of the emotions. Why did you do that? What was going through your head? What happened? And feeling every single emotion, whether it's shame, fear, anger, guilt, processing, not rushing through them, but processing them so that you can evolve from that and move forward. Um, Only then can you set yourself free from that. Yeah, it's and I, I think that's a really good place to end. What I would actually say is before you, because often you can think, oh, sometimes these things are on such a subconscious level that we don't realize that Mm -hmm. those old shames, those guilts, that that those pains are still playing out in our everyday life. Mm -hmm. So a good way of identifying them are those repetitive thoughts, what I call the spinning plates of the head. Mm -hmm. And when you have a spinning plate going on, that brings your vibration down that makes you feel bad about yourself just write it down and then do take the time as Sylvia just said and and do that introspection in the way that Sylvia has just described it and I guarantee you you will be able to shift through these energies you will be able to release it you will be able to apply the forgiveness take the lesson and move forward Mm -hmm. so that's bye-bye from me and me and as always don't forget to subscribe like and share please share with everyone thank you (laughs) till next time till the next time bye bye thank you for listening to today's episode if you haven't already subscribed please do so and please leave a review as it helps us grow and bridge the gap between the sexes if you have any topics you would like us to cover shoot us an email until next time go out and practice putting all your cards on the table with no judgment, expectations, and fear.